Hi everyone, welcome to part 5 of Forensic Examinations 4, the examination. Um, we've only got a couple of minutes left. I'm finally uh, going to round this up by showing you Harlan Carvey's Red Ripper to uh, examine the ntuser.dat file. Alright, for the user hacker. Uh, let me just get rid of that. We're going to open up another VM machine. Alright, this one is going to be uh, just a basic Windows XP box. Alright, um, we'll open that one. All right, I'm going to pause it while it loads, but this is just a basic bog standard installation of uh, Windows XP. Okay, right. Um, I'm trying to remember my password. Um, You'll notice the interpreter stuff on the desktop, but this is an old VM that I used when I was playing around with pen testing. It's kind of fallen by the way at the moment. Um, now you can download Red Ripper uh, from a variety of sources. Um, I'm pretty sure that the latest version, yeah, is 2.0.2. Um, I think anyway, that's the latest version that I have. Okay. There's the ntuser.dat file that I exported from our case. Um, You'll need to remember when you're viewing it through Windows Explorer that it is a hidden file and it's also classed as a system file, so you may need to tell uh, the operating system to allow you to view it, okay? So, this is Red Ripper. What we're going to do now, if we browse to the file we're going to look at, which is on our desktop, um, we're going to call it uh, the output file, NTUser output, okay? Uh, the plugin, now, the NT user plugin, SAM security software and system, they all apply to different uh, registry files which we'll come to in further videos. Alright, so you select the one which applies to the video you are going to look at. In this case, it's NT user. And then just click rip it. You can see it's doing a few things. And eventually it will give you a message that says zero plugins completed with errors, which means that it's completed successfully with no problems. Alright, so click close. You'll notice that a two NT user output files. One is uh, the log file, which contains all the the output that we just saw, ending in zero plugins completed with errors. And then the other one is the actual contents of the NT user dot .dat file. Now this is the file that we looked at in autopsy earlier on, which is all full of dots and stuff that we couldn't make head and the tail of just by looking at it. All right. So looking at this uh, gives you various information about the user hacker. Um, if we just keep scrolling down a little bit, what you'll see is recent docs, the recent docs refer to the private stuff folder was accessed, that was accessed, alright, um, it's broken down a little bit further here. Um, there isn't a lot of information in, in this particular one because all we've done is created the user account, logged in, deleted the file and logged out, but this would be populated with a lot more information if you were looking at the ntuser.dat file for an established user who's been running for you know weeks or months or years try it out on your own you'll see a lot of stuff in there um, that you may find of interest or just just you know you'll realize what the registry records um, with regards to your actions on the computer okay um, and that is it for this uh, video um, part five it has taken a little while to get through um, <coughs> excuse me I would suggest that you Try a couple of these tricks out, you know, do a little bit of examinations on your own stuff. Um, before I switch off, I did have an email this morning um, from uh, Pablo Escobar, actually. Not, uh, probably not Lee Pablo Escobar. <laughs> um, who was saying that he was having a problem installing Helix within his uh, VM. Um, it was basically getting to the screen where he was putting in a username and password, creating a username and password, okay, on the installation screen, and it would just stay there and not do anything. I had that problem as well, all right. Um, I had to do a little bit of Googling to, to get it up and running, but basically it, you need to kill uh, a couple of processes that are running at the time, and it'll skip right through. If you need the link to the, the web page, um, I do have it. I don't have it at hand right now. Um, but uh, if you want to drop me an email, I'll, I'll chuck my email up on the screen in a second, um, and I'll send the link over to you and, and try and help you through.
that as much as I can, okay? So, um, that's about it, I'm afraid. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I need to take um, a couple of days and work out exactly what we're going to do next. The this, uh, this video was just a quick sort of show as to what a forensic examiner might do it it's it was quick and it was dirty and it, and it wasn't you know particularly thorough because we knew exactly what had happened but what I'm gonna do now in, in the you know the series of videos to come is focus on certain parts of forensics certain files and how we extract it and, and hopefully uh, you will find them interesting and and leave me some nice feedback and, and if you have anything to you know any any negative feedback then please stick that up as well so i can know how to improve on these videos and and sort of keep you interested so i'm going to pause it again just so i can bring my email address up for you uh hold on right oh, didn't want to do that there's my email address uh like i said if you've got any questions i you uh, want to send me send them through to that and i will get back to you as soon as i can other than that, please leave comments. Um, I'm hoping to upload all five videos uh, straight away in one go. Um, and it's just a case then of getting them up on Security Tube for you to watch. So thanks very much. Um, I hope I haven't bored you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, whatever that will cover. Take care.